welcome to uh, the first episode in a series I'm going to be making uh, on my Abruk campaign. Um, I did a little sort of pre-video on my phone the other night. Um, unfortunately, I didn't catch anything. Um, it was a really warm evening last night, and I didn't catch anything either. But uh, I've got rid of the beard, which is what I'm putting it down to. It's definitely not my angling ability. I definitely. I'm not catching fish because I had a beard. Um, I'm going to basically just run you through the highs and the lows of my um, of every trip that I do here. Um, sometimes I'm going to catch and sometimes I'm not. And uh, hopefully, more often than not, I'm going to catch. Um, but uh, basically, I spent the last two years fishing a. Um, fishing a number of different day ticket waters and I've kind of not really felt like I've been I don't know what the right word is I don't know I just haven't felt very happy with my fishing I've, I've, I've done a lot of chopping and changing and different places different rigs different this different that and I just need something to be a bit more consistent for me to be a bit happier um, and uh, I've changed ship patterns at work so um, as it is, it means that I can get the old quick night in because I don't start until half past nine. So, as long as it's not too far away from work, I can get a quick night in quite easily. Um, and I look for places around Heathfield. I was going to fish Bradley Pond, but when I walked around there, there was a lot of small fish. Um, I was going to fish Dawes Pond, but um, I don't know why, I just didn't really feel it. Um, and basically I was just going for a little walk around a few little ponds and that and I walked around Abrook, I used to fish it a lot when I was younger um, and it just, it's such a stunning lake and um, and for that reason I've just decided that this is where I'm going to fish um, you know the fish aren't exactly massive, there's a few 20s in here, but not many um, so I've done my first night, it was rather uneventful unfortunately um, I had quite a few line bites, but um, where I'm fishing, I'm fishing right next to a bridge, and uh, and I would imagine that the line bites were from fish passing through the swim. You know, that they, they were just slight slight bleeps. Um, so I put roughly a kilo of bait over each sort of spot, and um, I'm just going to leave that for the day and go for a walk around and see if I can find something that I can catch off the top, and. Um, see how we get on there and if I can't catch anything off the top then I don't catch anything off the top but it's yeah I don't feel that fishing on the deck is going to be effective until after dinner time um, with the present conditions and after watching the fish the last few days so I'm gonna have a go at floater fishing hopefully I'll have one because it's starting to warm up and it's starting to get a bit brighter um, and hopefully that will get me off my mark um, of course the good thing about the float fishing is that if I can get a group of fish feeding I can be a bit more selective in the fish that I catch um, and with there being quite a few smaller fish it means that I can hopefully nail one of the better doubles or you know if I can get a group feeding I'm hypothetically at the moment um, but yeah I'm just going to record and let you guys know how I get on and uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Let's see how we do. So this is the swim that I'm fishing. It's like the corner swim. Bridge swim. I don't know what you want to call it. Commands me quite a lot. Well, little spots. It's not a, Obviously none of the swims here are very big. It's not a big pond. But, uh... I've got some bait going towards those lilies over there. Some bait just on the edge of these lilies here, which it looks like something's fizzing about on probably roach, but you never know. Uh, <coughs> what I'm going to fish over <coughs> over the top, sorry, just eating some peanuts. <coughs> the bait that I'm fishing with is a combination of ABS boilies, sweet corn, there's a tin of tuna in there. Um, some chickpeas, 
and uh, some pellet which is slopped up nicely just to help draw the fish in it's a bit of party mix as well it smells pretty feisty I put a tin of crab meat in there as well um, but uh, I'm going to fish over the top of them with combi rigs here's one of them you can see it's got a size 6 chod hook Barb's crimped down because you're not allowed to use barbed in here. Small piece of putty to balance it. And then there's a little break in the uh, in the coated braid to give it a hinged effect. A little sinker to make sure it all sinks nice. I've steamed it straight. And then a big loop the other end so that you that acts as a kicker then to make sure it doesn't tangle on the cast. I'm going to be fishing that with two and a half ounce in leads inline leads, um, about two or three feet of lead free lead core and uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon mainline. Um, the hook baits are a specialised baits S1. I haven't done so well on it but my mate Chris is, well you all know Chris anyway, Chris has done very well on him so um, fingers crossed we can have some on it. Let's see how we go. Well, I've left my swim resting. I've put some biscuits in all over the place. It's been hours. Finally found some fish sort of half heartedly taking them. Oh, you could just hear one in the corner over there. Um, I'm planning on having a dangle for them now. Just a very straightforward approach of a um, side hooked pop up. The eyes pushed into the pop up so it doesn't roll down the shank on the cast so that it doesn't impair it when you strike um, but that's it, very very simple size 10 mixer hook 15 pound line straight through um, probably a bit excessive for in here but if you're going, going in the lilies or whatever you, at least you know it's still going to be attached um, fingers crossed we'll have one for the camera <laughs> Well, it's halfway through my first 24. Um, not a lot to report. I, I kind of got the fish feeding, but they weren't taken. They're taking like the odd mixer. And then they left. Um, so I did what I do best. I put the rods out and I had a nap. Um, and nothing woke me up. But it's just started raining. Pressure started dropping. You can feel it in the air. Hopefully the drop in pressure will put them on the feed overnight and uh, should hopefully have something to report fairly soon. Chris is supposed to be turning up, whether he does or not is another matter. Um, it would be nice if he does for when I uh, have the chunk. But um, we'll have to see how it goes. Like I said, it's just started raining now. Just sat back chilling under the brolly. And, um, hmm. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will make the fishing better. We'll see. Well, that rain and that drop in pressure has definitely increased the uh, movement of everything. As you can see, I'm getting like little twitches and that on my line where I'd imagine it's small stuff. There's a lot of small stuff in here, like roach and bream and stuff. But I'd imagine that, um, that that's knocking against the line. But if they're there, then in turn they'll bring the carp in, you know. Um, Bait, you know, the bait's out there. I put all my bait in now, so I'm committed. So I've got to, you know, just sit it out now, and hopefully I'll have something. Um, fingers crossed, because uh, I wouldn't like to blank for two days <laughs> on here. I feel a bit like I was a poor angler, and that I should have kept the beard. 
Um, but uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed we have one. Well, it's getting into the second evening, and um, well, first proper evening, because I, as I set up in the dark last night, um, there's a lot more movement now we've had that rain, and the pressure's dropping. My um, long-suffering girlfriend Lucy's here with me, and she's brought Chinese over for tea, Chinese and cherry coke, so the Chinese was very nice. I've not had the cherry coke yet. Um, just going to keep sitting here and hopefully have a fish for the camera. If not, this is going to be a boring video for you guys, and I do apologise, but hey. Well, it's quarter past twelve, and I've just got back from going in the lake. I'm, uh, I've dried myself out. I had my first pick up, took me straight in a set of pads. Um, I could still feel the fish kicking. So, um, so me being me, I thought I'll go to my car and go and get my chesties. See if I can get in and sort of free it up. Went to go and get my chesties, they weren't in the car, luckily. Because uh, the water's a bit deeper than I thought it was going to be. Um, and when I got in the water it was actually like basically up to my shoulders pretty much once I'd sunk into the silt. It's very very silty this swim all around. It's quite good that way that I've got in and uh, explored the lake bottom um, but it's very silty. Um, there's at least a foot of silt everywhere. Um, absolute nightmare. Loss of fish. Um, just one thing though. Um, I would say I wouldn't recommend getting in a pond um, to anybody. Don't go drowning because I got in a pond. Uh, you, you know, snag up a fish and oh, well, Kev on the bank angling went in the pond. So I'm going to do that and then drown. So unless you're a very good swimmer, or uh, and and you're aware of the fact that silt is, you know, heavy silt can can you know can you can really sink into it. Um, then uh, don't even I wouldn't definitely wouldn't condone it anyway but um, I'm going to finish this cigarette re-rig my rod I've got my rig and everything back so at least I know the fish isn't trailing a leader or anything um, and uh, and then I'm going to have a bit of a cast about in the dark see what I can find and um, put a bait on it there because I'm not fishing where I was fishing because it's just too silty it's a hard lesson to learn after 24 hours, but it's a good lesson to learn because it means I won't be putting my bait there again. One second now. Just gonna. I think I've got Chris on the phone. Yeah. Anyway, as we're saying, 
I've, uh, I've moved to the back pool. I've got a little trod in the uh, edge. I've seen quite a few fish moving about here. Unfortunately, there's also quite a few ducks and now the wind has started getting up as well, which isn't helping my course. Um, I put a few, put about 10 pouches full of mixers out. Fish were going bananas for them. I hooked a good one and I lost it. Um, so I'm just tying up another rig now. Um, I'm using Fox Sigma Floater Line and a 12 and a half pound breaking strain. Um, a small trim down piece of krill uh, pop up because that's what I was catching them on last night. So they must like the flavour. Um, so I'm using a small piece of krill pop up. Fish just washed in. So there are still fish there, that's ideal. Um, ah, no, ducks. Anyway, I think the ducks are going to ruin this for me, if I'm totally honest. Um, there's nine ducks on here at the moment, and they need shooting. Because <coughs> they're an absolute nightmare. Yeah, they're totally ruining everything. They're just wankers. That's what they are. Look, I'll show you. Just watch them. Just watch them a second, really. Yeah, that's it. it makes shit loads of noise. Awesome top ducks. Pricks. So anyway, there were some fish feeding back there. I was going to fish on the top for them. They're probably not there anymore. Look at them. What a bunch of bell ends. They got the entire pond to do this and they decided to do it here because I've been putting biscuits in. They're like, ha ah, you're trying to fish. Ha ah, ha, we'll ruin it for you. So yeah. Um Getting back to the task at hand. Okay, so I've tied a loop, which I've then put my bait on hair, you know, like a hair. Um, I've got a size 12 mixer hook. God, they really are annoying. I've never seen such annoying ducks. Um, so, anyway. Get your size 12 mixer hook. And just tie it standard knot that's not size. You can use a size 10. I used a size 10 a minute ago, but I couldn't find any more 10, so I'm using a 12. Crush down the barb because that's the Exeter City, uh, Exeter City, wait, well, yeah, Exeter Angling Association rules. So feed you bait onto your hook <coughs> through the back of the eye and then just knot the snot out for five six seven eight nine ten Pull the line through. <clears throat> there you have it. I generally fish the hook off a bit. People tend to fish it quite tight, but I think that it's harder for them to realise there's a hook next to it if it's just off it, maybe half a centimetre. And uh, they're more likely to take. It, it depends on the situation. If they start getting spooked by that, I've, I'll tie another one with a tighter hair and I'll just, you know, you learn to read the situation as you go. Um, I'll just tie that to a controller. 
with a leg clip, a little mini link there to hold it in place just so it's got that bolt effect if I'm not paying attention, but hopefully I am. Um, so if these ducks will just... Uh, and, um, I've got half a chance of catching, but like I say, it's whether they go or not. So I just have to let you know I get on. Listen to them. They're horrible. What purpose do ducks actually serve? I don't know. Look who's joined, boys and girls. Christoph's going to show me how it's done because uh, that backwater, the ducks and everything else, I had another one to take and as I struck, uh, the controller whizzed over my shoulder, hit the tripod that this uh, video camera's mounted on and smashed to pieces. So I've been waiting for Chris to get here to uh, use my, to, to nick a controller off him because I've not got any left now. Um, but I'm back in my swim for a little bit. Just going to pack the majority of my gear down so that I've not got too much to pack away at the end of the day. Um, just keep the rods and that there, and um, have a little stalk. Have a little stalk, yeah. Can't beat a bit of stalking. Fish moving off the pads, man. I'm going to get a thing. Where? 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 Well, just move right off your spot. That's where your line is going. You see where that little cut off is in the lilies? There, there. Just went into that room. Ooh. Mine's about three foot off a of lily. Ooh, you never know, might be some action yet. But yeah, I'm going to get the rest of my gear packed down first and then go for a little stalk. I got lost trying to find it. Chris got lost trying to find it. Why are you still recording this camera? I don't know. You said to me, go, to, go.